I'm remaking this video because, well, the first time it didn't go so well. All right. So today we're going to talk about factoring. When do we have to factor to solve? When don't we have to factor to solve? It's the first question we have to ask ourselves. So we look for three things. If we have those three things, we have to use factoring or a quadratic equation or completing the square. The three things we look for are a papa bear, a mama bear, and a baby bear, some number or constant. Okay. If you have all three of these things, you can't solve this by basic algebra. For example, if I see like x squared plus 2x plus 3 equals 0, another hallmark, first thing I do is get that beast equals 0. If I go to solve this, my gut tells me to subtract 3 from both sides. I'm going to make sure I'm recording. I am. I did it, guys. And I get x squared plus 2x equals negative 3. And from here I say, oh no, what do I do? Subtract 2x maybe? There's no way for me to get these x's combined or to get them all on one side or to get an x by itself. I, I, I'm stuck. Alright, so that was a problem we should have probably went and factored because it's quadratic. Quadratic. So let's take a look at an example of what we do when we have the papa, mama, and baby bear. Now make sure if you have just the mama and baby bear, that's just a basic linear. You can solve that just basic algebra. If you have a papa and a baby bear, you can move over the baby bear and then square root it. And then it'll solve it. You don't have to do factoring. And if you have a papa and mama bear, you can pull an x out of both and then just do basic algebra. Okay? So only if you have all three do you have to factor. Okay? Only if you have all three. Or quadrat. There's other ways to do it if you don't have all three. So let's take a look. Let's say we're doing x squared plus 3x equals 4. Right. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at it. Next thing I'm going to do is get it equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. Ta -da. Now, for my first step, well, I guess I set equal to. Now, for my next step, I'm going to look at my factors to see. Now, before I get going with this, I'm going to label each of these coefficients, each of the numbers in front of my variables, with a letter. I'm going to use those today and tomorrow. AX squared plus BX plus C. Right. So for this example, our A is 1, our B is 3, and our C is negative 4. All right. So our next step is we're going to find factors of C. So we're going to take negative 4 and break it up. So I have negative 4 and 1, negative 2 and 2. Or a negative one. Now you don't have to write down every factor. You're just looking for when do they add up to b. Find factors that add to b. So negative four plus one is negative three, which is not three. Negative two plus two is zero, which is not three. 4 minus 1 is 3, which is 3. Ta-da! And that's it. This is our magic factor. So I'm going to do x plus 4 from right here times x minus 1 from right here. And that equals 0. Now if I'm looking to solve it, I set each piece equal to 0. So I set x plus 4 equals 0 and x minus 1 equals 0. So I subtract a 4 over. So I get x equals negative 4. If you get good at these, you don't actually have to set each part equals 0. If you aren't good at these, please do it. I'm going to add 1 to both sides to get x equals 1. Now I have two answers. There we go. That's all there is to it. The sensible things. Alright, let's do another example. Let's do 6x squared minus 2x equals 0. 
I, this doesn't, oh, I have to remember to do the baby bear, mama bear. Baby, whatever. All right, so let's take a look at this. We have a papa bear and we have a mama bear, but we don't have a baby bear, right? So we're gonna factor this, but we're gonna do it a little bit differently than we did the first example, all right? What do both these have in common is what I'm gonna ask. What do both these have in common? They both have an X in common, and they both have a, what can you divide six and two by? Six by two. Yeah, so what can I pull out? Two X. So I'm gonna pull out a two X. There's an X here. What's six divided by two? Three. What's x squared divided by x? X. What's two x divided by two x? One, but that negative stays. So this one's one that you, if you don't have a C, if you don't have a baby bear, you don't have to go through and find factors and see which ones add up to the middle. You just pull out what they both have in common. At this point, I set each piece equal to zero. So up here I get x equals zero. Down here I get three x equals one, x equals one third. Not too bad? These ones usually aren't too bad. That would make too much sense. All right. Next example. Uh-oh, we have a number in front of our x squared. But the good news is r equals zero. Now, one way you might have been taught to do this already is to guess and check. Like, you put your 2x and your x, and then you start guessing which factors can work, and you plug them in and see which ones work, right? I'm not a huge fan of it, but if it works for you, it works for you. I like to do it this way. First, we're going we're gonna to multiply a times c. So in this example, it would be 2 times 3 is 6. Okay? And then we're going to find factors of a c, aka on this one, 6. Okay? So what times what equals 6? We got 3 and 2, 6 and 1. And we're going to see See which adds up to B. Let me keep Dory for a second. So 3 plus 2 is 5. 6 plus 1 is 7. Which one's our winner? We have a winner. 6 plus 1. All right. So next we're going to go through and we're going to break apart this 7x into 6x and 1x. I broke it up based on these two numbers I found over here. Okay. Alright. Now this is called chunking. Not losing your lunch. I don't know. Don't demonetize me though I'm not monetized. So we're going to lose our chunks up here. What do both these have in common? They have a 2, because 6 divided by 2 is 3. And they have max, right? So I'm going to pull out a 2x. 2x divided by 2x squared is x. 6x divided by 2x, x is canceled. 6 divided by 2 is 3. What can I pull out both these? What do they have in common? They don't both have an X, they don't both have a 3, but they both have a 1, so I can only pull out a 1 on this one. And it stays the same. These two things in parentheses should match. If they don't match, something went, ar went wrong, went awry. So then I combine these two things, and I get 2X plus 1. That's X plus 3. Well, 0. It's factored! Hooray! There was much rejoicing amongst the community. Do you hear them rejoicing? So now I say each piece equals zero.
So I get 2x equals negative 1. x equals negative a half. x equals negative 3, because I subtract 3 over. Ta-da! Any questions? This one's a little bit more tricky. You guys want to do one more really, 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 really difficult one? All right. They all said yes. Every single person was jumping out of their chairs in joyous glee. I just have a sound barrier. Just why the video couldn't hear it. All right, so here we go. Let's do this one. Wow. This would be the toughest one you ever have to factor your entire life, probably. And if you can do this, you can do anything. You can't bench 225 unless you can bench 350. Oh, it equals zero. Hooray. First thing I'm going to do is see, do you see an x to the third? That's even bigger than a papa bear. I can't do anything with that, so I have to get rid of that and make it a papa bear first. I feel like if I don't remake the first part of the video, no one will know what I'm talking about. What do all these have in common, though? They all have an x, so can I pull an x out of all these? Yep, they're all breaking up with someone. They're all going to have an x. Step one, complete. <laughs> step two, I need to go through and actually factor this piece. So what's my, what was my first step? Multiply these numbers. You see where if you have four in front of x squared, if you do the guess and check method, you're gonna have to try two and two and four and one with all the different factors of 30. It'll take you probably five to 10 minutes just to go through guess and check with all the different ones. Okay? And it can't, it wouldn't even guarantee that you'll pick the right factor. So four times 30 is, 120, right? I'm going to put it right here. So what times what equals 120? I'm going to start with the obvious ones, which is like 12 and 10, 60 and 2. Let's just see what happens when we add these up. 12 plus 10 is 22. Does that equal 43? No. This is 62. Does it equal 43? No. All right, let's try some more. What times it tell what times what equals twelve? Well I could try thirty and four. No. What about forty and three? Ding 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 ding. We have a winner. So I'm gonna use that information to break apart my forty three. both these have in common? A 4x? Yes, yeah, so I'll pull a 4x. <laughs> both these have in common? A 3, correct? Do these match in parentheses? Yar, so we're in the right path. So I'm going to combine these, move them up front. did it, y'all. We factored it. Now what do we do with each piece? It's a equals zero. So first part says x equals zero. Except 4x plus 3 equals zero. x plus 10 equals zero. So this becomes 4x equals negative 3. x equals negative 3. Okay. I'm just saw basic algebra here. Don't overthink this part. It's really common to here I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. Basic algebra. Nothing to do there. So we have our three answers. We did it, guys. We factored something. That's it. That's all I got for y'all. So that's the time I have to remake.